Welcome back to Business Today. Right now we're moving on to our market discussion segment after a while we have the market discussion segment. But we have a familiar face in the studio with us, uh, Mr. Travis Gorms, uh, who is the product head at Frontier Research, is here in the studio. Travis, welcome back to the show. Great to have you on. Uh, thanks very much and nice to be here again. Now, Travis, I think uh, we are talk talking a little bit about the tourism industry today. So. The country has opened up back again. There are tourists who are coming in. There is a protective bubble that is operating and the tourist hotels are operating under. Uh, we'll start off with the global perspective. How are the countries that are open for business, so to say, faring right now? Uh, so looking at the trend uh, overall in globally, uh, so I mean, uh, you know, looking at the start of 2020, I mean, a lot of countries followed suit and went to these very heavy lockdowns where they completely closed borders. Uh, then uh, what we saw was that in the second half of 2020 uh, is when a lot of countries started to uh, decide to like move from like a full closure towards a more partial closures where they started to selectively uh, allow tourists from different countries to visit uh, with very tight restrictions. So, uh, so we saw like Europe was like one of the first to open up, uh, as well as then followed by America, uh, Middle East, and uh, slowly Asia is also looking to open up. Yeah, I think uh, also now, you know, what are the practices that are in place in these countries and in Sri Lanka? Uh, so broadly, what we have seen um, is that uh, looking at the countries that have opened up, uh, so broadly what we've seen is that uh, we, we, from the countries we have reviewed, uh, there are about three broad trends we have seen. So some countries, since they opened up, they sort of relaxed restrictions further. They become more confident. Uh, so some of the things that they have done uh, is they have removed the restriction uh, on, uh, they relaxed some of the risk requirements with regard to ne having a negative PCR test, uh, as well as broadening the categories of countries uh, that can come in. So there were a couple of countries like that, like uh, Costa Rica, Mexico, uh, some of the, a lot of the Caribbean countries have been following that trend. Uh, but uh, looking at some of the countries, the earliest ones that opened up, like Europe, uh, Western Europe and in Eastern Europe, uh, what we've seen happening is that since they opened up, they've actually tightened uh, some of their restrictions. Uh, so we've seen uh, countries, for example, like Greece, uh, which, you know, which opened up in June and there was, uh, that became like a haven for many uh, people in Western Europe who wanted to get away from uh, the, the winters and all to come down to Greece. Uh, but th uh, there, what we have seen is a lot of the countries, they have, uh, they have imposed uh, quarantine uh, restrictions again. So Greece uh, has like a 10-day quarantine that is now mandatory. Uh, Peru also now has imposed like a 14-day uh, mandatory uh, uh, quarantine. Uh, so PCR tests and quarantines are kind of like the most common one. But as a baseline, uh, almost everyone has PCR testing as well as when moving around, uh, mask wearing is pretty much essential. So those are the two yeah. most common things. Apart yes. from the safety guidelines, uh, do you see the vaccination process is now started in most, almost all parts of the world? Do you see that becoming a requirement for traveling? Uh, it could be going forward because now I think there's also talks of uh, having uh, like a, a vaccine related like a passport that is tied to that. Yeah. Uh, so that's something that uh, countries will be exploring. Uh, because overall, uh, what I feel that might happen is that, you know, I, I think the, the sentiment has kind of shifted from, you know, this is just a short-term thing to this, this might be like an ongoing thing. Yeah, and the same maybe there might be, Yeah, so, I mean, similar to the sort of the change we saw uh, after the September 11th attacks, where, you know, overall the sort of the security around, uh, you know, airports and, and, you know, aviation has increased. Similarly, we might see going forward that, you know, having a, a negative PCR test, you know, ha getting vaccinated, that might be a common practice going forward. That might be part and parcel of uh, the tourism experience. And now talking about Sri Lanka, now, of course, uh, we want to attract tourists, mm -hmm. uh, albeit safe tourists, so to say. Uh, what are the things that tourists who are looking to come to a country look at? Uh, so looking at the experience of other globally as well, uh, I think broadly one of the things they would definitely be looking at uh, is in terms of the, the COVID cases uh, in the country, you know, d the sense that they're getting whether uh, is the things under control, you know, uh, does it seem like there is a proper guidelines that are being followed. Uh, and I think the other thing is, uh, important one is in terms of the policy consistency. Uh, so, so it's not so much about how restrictive uh, the, the requirements are to come into the country, it's whether it's consistent or not. So that's what we've seen in countries like Maldives, where they have like a very uh, strict plan that they have in place, so there are restrictions, uh, but the government has been very straightforward with and very transparent with regard to their policies. So because of that, uh, we've seen a lot of tourists getting uh, attracted back 
Uh, whereas in contrast, if you take a country like Bahamas, uh, what we've seen is they, they opened up very quickly and without any uh, too much restrictions. Uh, but then subsequently, like a month later in October, they like reclosed for tourism. And then after that, they reopened again. And there's been a lot of uncertainty with the policies, whether do you need a PCR test or not? Will you be asked to quarantine or not? Uh, so that, that uncertainty causes a lot of stress for tourists. And that's a key thing that deters tourists. So I would say, you know, the health situation uh, and, uh, you know, the policy consistency is what the tourists are really looking for when deciding to come. And also, uh, I think uh, this is also something related to that topic. Uh, when you actually experience tough times, there is innovation that pops up. Now, tourism, we think of it as very straightforward. You go somewhere, see something, or we visit something. There has been, uh, been uh, innovation in this sector. Uh, yeah, definitely. Looking at all sectors, pretty much yeah. we've seen there's been that acceleration in terms of that trend towards digitization. Uh, so we're seeing similar trends with, um, uh, with tourism as well. You know, you're having like these virtual walkthroughs and these virtual guided tours. I think that might become uh, much more commonplace. And I think the important thing is this was a trend uh, that was there even prior to COVID because people were like moving away from this kind of idea of like mass tourism where there was uh, you know, very like heavily like, uh, you know, when you take like popular locations, uh, this worry about overcrowding and um, uh, I mean that f that worry had been there even prior to COVID and people want a more experiential sort of uh, tourism is what they're looking for. So so that might be what we will see going forward where you get a lot of uh, where tourists start to prefer, you know, not uh, going to these places where there's mass gatherings. They're looking for something more intimate, more niche. Uh, so uh, So I think a lot of uh, I think tourists, uh, operators, and hotels, I think if they gear more towards that to cater to those kind of more personalized and more tailor-made experience, I think tourists will really respond to that. And also, I think the virtual reality, like you were talking about, so virtual tours, it'll be like the mostly like the real thing, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So with, I mean, technology can only get better, and we we're already seeing a lot of the improvements there. So I think that would be a normal part of it. No, uh, I think uh, in, during the COVID time, this popped up, uh, working from home, working from distance. Uh, with that, I think, uh, you know, travel tourism became a uh, work tourism, I guess uh, mm -hmm. they say it, became a norm. Can we attract those type of customers uh, to our location in Sri Lanka? Uh, yeah, definitely, because people like want to change in scenery. And so if you can offer, because I mean, that has been, even prior to COVID, that has been one of the priorities in Sri Lankan tourism as well, to attract more like business tourists, uh, the mice tourists, and, and we've been having a lot of the infrastructure now coming into place in terms of the uh, the, you know, the, the branded hotels, the uh, exhibition centers. Uh, so definitely the infrastructure is there in place. So I think it's a matter of like positioning it. Uh, so I think a clear thing is to just to convey that message that, you know, we have a very consistent policy that the, uh, the health related issues are being sorted out. Uh, so I think it, it comes down to that messaging. I don't see why, any reason why we can't uh, track that category. And finally, I think, uh, you know, tough time sit-ups all uh, what do you think all these implications are for the future of tourism industry in Sri Lanka? Uh, so definitely I would say that we definitely have to move away uh, from that sort of, uh, you know, focusing on the tourist arrivals number, trying to hit a certain target in terms of uh, really what we should see is the, uh, it's really that cost benefit, you know, the, the value of the tourists uh, that are coming here, making sure that the tourists who do get, uh, that, we're, that they're getting the full experience, that they are uh, that it's benefiting all segments of the economy. Uh, so really, I think we should move away from that quantity towards the more quality uh, of the tourists that are arriving. And I, I think that shift, uh, I think the COVID has sort of accelerated that trend. Thank you, Travis, uh, for that valuable information. That was uh, Mr. Travis Gomes, the product head at Frontier Research, updating us on the tourism sector. With that, we'll wind up today's edition of Business Today. Thank you for joining us. Good night.